He came for this purpose and God has glorified him in it. So, does it make any difference? 1 Timothy 4, 1. But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith. This is talking to Christians. Paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Pluralism, all of these other philosophical things, folks, they sound pretty good. <coughs> doctrines of demons. They're leading people away from the truth. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 20. But now I say that these things with the Gentiles sacrifice, all these other gods, all these other gods we're supposed to accept, they sacrifice the demons, not the God. You see, there's one true God, and He doesn't represent all faiths. One God, everything else is a demon. I do not want you to become sharers with demons, Paul says. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. We're going to have to quit kind of going with whichever way is comfortable. We're going to have to take our foot out of the world and put both of them in the kingdom. Yeah. Because these are kingdom days. Can we do that? Is it really possible? 1 John 5, which I read earlier, verse 3 says yes. You and I can keep God's commandments. We can overcome the world. We do have victory because of our faith and trust in Jesus. And who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes. Jesus. This Jesus. Not one that they invented. Jesus is the Son of God. You say, really? Come on now. Is there another way? Jesus said, I have a new way. The truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Is that the only place in the Bible where it says that? Maybe John messed up. How about Acts 4, 10 through 12? It would be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified. See, in most of these groups we're talking about don't believe that the, in the crucifixion of Jesus or that it made any difference. Whom God raised from the dead. Another whole group of those people reject that idea. By this name, this man who they had healed, uh, here before you is in good health. Speaking of Jesus, he is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, speaking to the religious leaders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we <coughs> could be saved, might be saved, <coughs> must be saved. So as much as we can appreciate and try to share life experiences with a lot of different people, we are the pillar and support of the truth of Jesus, the one and only true Savior. And if we're not going to do it, folks, who else is going to do it? In our generation, in our time, it's our shot. As my niece said to our family members yesterday, she's a little bitty girl, she looked at the family and she said, well, that song says, take your best shot. <laughs> We're going to take our best shot. We're going to have to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to be able to win the world with our flesh. It's going to have to be that they see Jesus in us. Maybe I can say, <clears throat> in times like these, maybe most in times like these, but the times are hard. <clears throat> Jesus shines bright through our day. Father in heaven, thank you for truth. Lord, we don't like being the people who have to swim upstream against our culture and the philosophies of our days. And in fact, Lord, many of us are just going to simply go somewhere else where we don't have to think about this. Or drop out of church altogether. 
and we will be a part of the great apostasy we were warned about in First Thessalonians. Lord, you have so many people here today who are your people. People who know that they desperately needed your forgiveness and salvation and eternal life, your love, your acceptance. Lord, help us to come to the place where we say, okay, I'm sold out, whatever it takes. If they think I'm crazy, if they think I'm stupid, if they think I'm dangerous, so be it. Lord Jesus, I'm going to stand to you. I'm going to walk with you. I want my life to be yours. I want your life to be mine. Lord, help us to be convicted of anything that stands in the way of that kind of life right now. That we might confess it and in your power turn from it and walk in your ways. The Lord, for someone here today who knows that they haven't been able to fix themselves, they can't make their life everything that it needs to be. They want to come home. They want to say, yes, God, forgive me. Jesus, come in and save me and make me a child of God. I want to stop being in charge of my own life. Jesus, I receive you to be my life, my Savior, my Lord, my God. Lord, for that person today that's struggling and they know that what's being said is true. But they're stuck. They're torn. And the enemy's trying to pull them away from this message even now. Lord, help them right now to say, God, show me who you are. Reveal me to me yourself in truth and in power. I don't want to walk away from this place. Just go back to life as it is. I want to know you as you really are. Reveal yourself, please, to me that I might respond. Or you may be calling some to be a part of the church family. Some you may be calling to ministry. Others you may be calling to a work in the life of another person to loving and faithfully share Jesus. Lord, call us for your purposes. And this time we pray. Jesus' name. Amen. The time of invitation is an opportunity to respond publicly. It's a time for those of us who are born again children of God to pray for ourselves and for those around us who maybe God has responded. It's a time for people to come to the altar and pray through a situation. To come to me, we'll have a time of prayer. Whatever it is that God's wanting to do, please keep in mind, it is always for your good because He loves you more than you will ever love yourself. So as we stand and as we see, I'll meet you here.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this message. And, uh, Lord, I, I pray that we would uh, take what we've learned, uh, take what we've heard, and uh, apply it to our everyday lives, Lord. Lord, as uh, we do have, we may have to stand alone, Lord, that uh, we would stand firm. And, and the fact that we know you're our Savior, we're going to be taken care of, Lord. Lord, and as we uh, come to this time of offering, Lord, I pray that uh, we would give sacrificially, Lord, that we would take these, uh, this money, and we would use it to glorify the kingdom, people would uh, hear the gospel, and Lord, that people's lives would be touched. 